Okay, I'm Chris, um, and I'm in 2B Mathematical Physics, and I'm also a very religious person, hence the title of the talk is Universe and God. Are science and religion opposed? Um, I don't think so, and that's the point of this talk today. Um, I'll give you a little diagram to tell you what I mean. So the basic stance uh, that I've seen of sort of like an atheist or agnostic person is um, unbelief, I'm not sure if I spelled that right, um, yeah, it's the basic stance, the default stance, that's what you start in. And you only move to belief if you have evidence. Now, I love this. In fact, uh, I follow it too. So the idea isn't whether or not this is right or wrong. It's whether or not evidence exists. So um, the point of this topic, this talk, is to provide evidence from science, because this topic is supposed to be about science, um, that God does exist. And so this talk is not about like the Bible or the Quran or like why bad things happen to good people if God is loving or anything like that. That's more of like theology and philosophy. Um, so if you have questions, try and keep them to like the scientific aspect uh, of things. Um, yeah, so if you've ever spent like 10 minutes uh, even looking into this, you'll probably have already covered the, the points I'm going to talk about. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically pick two points and sort of not just explain what they are, but then go on to the, the popular counter arguments for them and then present counter counter arguments for those, okay? Um, so the, the first of the main, um, the main proofs uh, of races is probably the most popular one, and you have already heard it, um, but it's the idea of the first cause. So we know for a fact that the universe began a finite time ago. Um, current, current theories say about 13.7 billion years ago, but it doesn't matter on the exact number. The point is, the Big Bang Theory is um, like the prevalent theory in physics, and uh, most, if not all, physicists um, believe the universe began time and space in the Big Bang uh, billions of years ago. And basically, the logic of this argument uh, is pretty simple. Your first point would be uh, whatever begins to exist Rationality behind this point would be causality. And then the second point would simply be the universe beginning to exist. And the rationality behind this would be, of course, the Big Bang. And obviously, um, if you can't see it, the conclusion you would draw, if both of these are true, would be uh, the universe has a cause. Now, um, so this is, this logic is valid. So if these first two points are true, then the third point has to be true. So obviously, a counter-argument would have to argue against one of these two points. Um, 
Now, a couple of, uh, couple of objections um, would be, well, if I'm applying this logic to the universe, then why not just apply it to God as well, right? Um, what caused God, or um, if, I'm, if I'm saying, like, God always existed, why can't I just say, well, the universe always existed, right? Um, well, essentially, you would be wrong to say that God came before the universe. Now, that might sound weird, but if you are strictly um, abiding by the definition of God as transcending time and um, being outside of time, you can't say God came before the universe because the word before um, requires you to have some sort of time. So this logic wouldn't apply because causality requires time. And God didn't come before the Big Bang. God was transcendent of the Big Bang. And so to say that God always existed, that sounds like you're applying time to him. But what you're really saying is that um, he doesn't exist in time. So uh, another. Uh, objection is the fact that this doesn't really, I mean, all we're saying is that the universe has a cause. That doesn't have to be God. It could be some sort of mechanism, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be um, some sort of being. Now, the problem with that is, if it's just some sort of mechanism that has no thought process or can make a decision, then if it's just some like inert cause, then it would have to produce its effect by necessity. It can't choose not to produce it. If it has an effect, the effect has to take place. So if the cause existed forever, then the effect would have had to exist forever. So if it was just some sort of mechanism that had no thought process that produced the Big Bang, if this mechanism caused the Big Bang, it would have caused it from eternity, and the Big Bang, the universe, would have existed for eternity as well. But that's uh, sort of leaving the realm of science and moving into philosophy, so I'm not going to touch too much on that. Um, the second main argument um, 